Well, good morning, everyone, and how are you doing today? How are you, Fernando? Good. Yeah? Yeah. That's wonderful. I hope you guys are doing well, too. Today, we have a Chevy Cruze, and not only, this, this is a special Chevy Cruze. Let me show you why. So inside this Chevy Cruze, it has that right there. That's right, this one has a factory Pioneer system, which means it has door speakers, it has tweeters, it has a center channel, it may have a subwoofer, we're looking right now. Sometimes when you get a car in, you don't know, and you have to do some investigating. So right now, we're actually getting ready to do the investigating. We have the car all dressed up, you know, we got our cool little, yeah. Let me show you what we are putting in, so like we show you the constant, and then we'll go back into the car. So first up, we have some R-type components for the front. We have some R-type coaxles for the rear. We have some road kill. We're gonna be using the fast strings. We're also gonna be doing, I think, an R-type subwoofer and a seal box. I don't know yet, but that's what we have so far. I mean, we have the speakers. Now we're not replacing the radio because along with Pioneer, it has the cool MyLink screen in the dash, which means he wants to keep that. Honestly, I don't even think they make a dash kit for it. So let's join Fernando in the trunk right now, and we're doing our archaeology audio. All right, what have we found? All right, so we find the, the amplifier on the passenger side, of course, in the trunk. Look at that. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah. So, so sexy. So sexy. So now that we know that it's here, there's a couple things we have to do. First and foremost, we have to find out what is feeding this, meaning what type of signal. Is it a fixed from the radio? Is it a variable from the radio? That's gonna tell us a lot, because if it's, let's say, variable, we may just need to add some RCAs to it, and then we can put whatever processor we want in this thing and tune the heck out of it. If it's fixed, that means we're gonna have to go after the amplifier, which means we might need to do summing, and then we'll have to figure out how many channels it has and from there we have to figure out what processor we want to go with. This is the first part of, of figuring this out, what to recommend to this customer. Now he's like, we, we went over like six different things and he's like, okay, yeah, all these work. Let's just figure out which one we want to go with and we'll go from there. What we want to do now is we're going to get an RTA, we're going to get a digital multimeter, we're going to get a tone generator, and we're going to get a polarity tester. Four tools. Now, I know you guys don't have all these tools and that's okay. We'll show you how to do it with Apple having all those tools because I know a lot of you get into the situation it's like how do I integrate in my factory amplifier bare minimum you're gonna need a digital multimeter and a 9 volt battery bare minimum okay let's get some tools RTA digital multimeter handheld portable polarity tester PT 9a 9 volt battery what are we missing tone generator tone generator so before we can test the output of the radio we need to figure out which plug has that on it the easiest way to do that is to figure out which plug has the speakers on it we are going to do that first all right lastly before we start we want to get some paper so we can write this stuff down anytime I start my notes what I do is write down the year make and model of the car in this case, it has a Pioneer system, so I want to write that. I want to write where the amplifier is at, obviously, and I'm going to write that it has three plugs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first plug, and this is an 8-pin plug, so we'll write down 8-pin plug. Now my guess is this one has the power and ground because it has the two fattest wires in it. For that, we're going to go ahead and take our digital multimeter. We're going to set it to volts DC. Go ahead and grab the ground here. We have 12 volts. We have ground. So this is showing us right here that this is the main power for the amplifier. We're gonna call that the power harness. On this harness, there's four other wires and they kind of look like speaker wires. And looking at the rear deck, I'm thinking they're the rear deck subwoofers. Now this has rear deck speakers and rear door speakers. It's six and a half in the rear door and six by nines in the rear deck. These six by nines are the subwoofer. We're going to leave the rear door speakers, just leave them disconnected because he likes rear deck speakers. So we're actually gonna put the Alpine R-types back here. Now what we wanna do real quick is just go ahead and take our tone generator. Sure enough, that is the rear deck speakers. We're gonna come back to those. We just, we're doing process elimination right now. Next, we'll grab the next plug. This is a 16 pin plug. Now this also looks like a speaker plug. We'll take our tone generator. Rear door, other rear door. Is that just the door? That's the door and the tweeter. The door and the tweeter? What's that? Is this the driver's door? 
Alright, so how this harness is broken apart is the top row here is the driver's side and the bottom row here is the passenger side. Alright, so as I said, you don't need all these cool tools to do this. Digital multimeter, 9 volt. What we want to do is set our digital multimeter to continuity. For this, we just grab two plugs, but you don't need it. You just need some wire that you can jam into this harness. And we'll go ahead and we'll test this here. Continuity. We have three ohm that's what it's telling us and then we can test the one next to it those are six ohm three ohm six ohm chances are good those are speakers now what we'll do is we'll take our nine volt and for this you're going to want a friend so we'll go ahead and clip it on and then we'll tap it if you can hear that, that's telling us that it's the driver's front. If you pay attention to the positive and negative on the battery and you have the door panel off, the speaker is going to move out. That's going to tell you which color on here is positive. You can also just hold the flashlight up to the grill and if you can see the speaker moving out, it's positive and if it's moving in, it's, it's negative. All you need, digital multimeter, battery, and you're done. So you can go through all four of them like we did with the tone generator and figure it out for yourself with, with minimal tools. What we're going to do though, is we're going to go ahead and use our PT9A, which is gonna create that same popping sound. Now, if you add this to the mix with your nine volt, it'll do the same thing. You just, all this does is measure the air coming off of the speaker and you can measure that clip, that pop, pop, pop and see if it's in polarity or not. So we'll go ahead and start with our first one here, the popping noise. This is green, green, black is the color from the factory and the green is positive and the green black is negative. We'll move on to the next two. What do you got? Green. Both the tweeter and the mid-range? Mm -hmm. Now the reason why I asked both tweeter and mid-range is because you want to test them both with whatever you're feeding them with because a lot of the times the tweeters wired up backwards. By the way, that was blue, brown, blue. Blue is positive. And green. That's passenger side. And that's the driver's or passenger front door. It's yellow, yellow, black. That is negative. Really? No. I think it's weird. Positive. Really? That's green. That's freaking strange. That's backwards. On this plug, the passenger rear door isn't in sequence with all the other doors. All the other doors, it goes positive, negative, then positive, negative, positive, negative. This door is negative, positive. If you're just assuming that just because three of them are all in the right direction, that the fourth one would be, don't. It's not. Number four, as we call it, is backwards. That's messed up. What the heck were they thinking? While we're going ahead and doing this, we'll go ahead and do the rear deck. Green. So on the rear deck, there's a green on the driver's side and a gray blue on the passenger side. Those are both the positives. So now we'll move on to the last plug, which is locked into place. So the last plug is also a 16 pin plug. It's just smaller. So we're gonna call it the small. And this has eight wires and then two extra little wires on it. There's a purple blue. Now in the past, we've seen that the purple blue wire is ANC or fake engine noise, which we may or may not have to worry about. What we wanna do now though, is go ahead and turn on the radio. We're gonna see what kind of voltage is coming out of this. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and use our digital multimeter set to AC, which is the V with the squiggly line. And also we're gonna use our RTA. So before we actually put the meter on this, Let's take a pause here. If you have a disc or a phone or something like that that has pink noise on it, that would be ideal because it's a constant sound. If you don't, you can play a radio or a CD or something like that, but it's gonna be constantly going up and down and variable, which is not gonna be the greatest thing for using one of these. We're gonna go ahead and grab our CD with pink noise on it. Now, if you need pink noise, you can go to DNF tool drawer and on the meters page, you can actually download a file with pink noise on it. Now, pink noise just sounds like fuzz. It's just sound, but that will make it easier. Now we'll go ahead and insert our probes. Now we're gonna guess on this because the speakers were, were across 
this way, we're gonna assume that these are too. They're either gonna be like this or like that, and I'm not doing the cross. Go ahead, turn it up. Turn it down. Oh, all right, let me show you what's going on here. All right, so that's all the way down. Go ahead and turn it up. Now this is what we wanted to see. This means it's variable voltage. Turn it down again. So this means that the output of the radio is turning up and down at the radio and not at the amplifier. This is a good thing. GM does this. They do this on the Camaro too. If you've got like a premium sound system in your Camaro, it has variable voltage. It's pretty nice. Now we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the RTA so we can actually see what the signal looks like. Go ahead and turn it back up. So what we're looking at here is the sound coming out of the radio. Turn it down. Turn it up. And that is the flattest I've ever seen come out of a factory radio. Look at that. Wow. Holy yeah. Holy. That is, there's, that's insane. That's pretty good. That's freaking awesome. That's, that's amazing. Go to the next channel here. We have the same thing. Oh, no. Same thing. Same thing. Wow. I'm a, wow. I'm I'm actually kind of speechless. Most of the time, that looks crazy, wonky. Wow, <laughs> dude. That's awesome. All right. Now, what we want to do is we need to figure out what is front, rear, left, right out of these eight wires because we don't know. So to do that, we're gonna just use the old fashioned balance and fader on the radio. We're gonna go back to the digital multimeter and we're gonna see which one of these four is actually putting out signal. Okay, I'm in number two. You're on two? All right, so the bottom right. All right, go ahead and switch it to a different channel. Four. We're going to four now. That's the volume up. Volume is up. Turn it down. Okay. Brown, white, blue, black. On the plug, the bottom right was number two, which is passenger front. Go up one and over. That's number four, which is the passenger rear. Okay, change it. All right, number one. All right, number one. Volume all the way up. All right, turn it down. And this would be the one directly below four is one. That leaves us one left. All right, let's try three. All right, so that's brown, green, black. So now what we've done is we've mapped our signal out of this, so we're golden. What we don't know still is the polarity of these wires. We, we don't know what's what. That's the only headache at this point, is figuring out out of the radio what's positive, what's negative. The way you could do it is if you had the harness for behind the radio, you could pull the radio out and you could check behind the radio to see what is positive, what is negative. We're not doing that because we're not pulling the radio out of the dash. So this is one where you are going to have to get a little tricky on. So what we're doing on this test is we've gone ahead and grabbed one of our test speakers. These are just, it's just a generic factory speaker. You could use one of the speakers you're pulling out of the car to do this. You will need this handheld polarity tester. You gotta have this. These things are 15 bucks. I gotta be honest, if you don't have one and you're doing this, you, you should have one. You can use it in your, for home stereo, use it for car audio. Just pick one up. We've gone ahead and plugged in some wire into the harness and we have our test speaker. We're playing that same polarity pop sound. Now, as far as getting that polarity pop sound for the radio, there again, we have it on our DF tool drawer. You can download it there. There's apps you can get for your phone, one called Speaker Pop. So you can find a polarity pop sound. What it's doing, it's popping this speaker. You wanna use something small and with a tweeter. And then we're gonna just take this. Lights up green. We know we've picked the right color. In this case, we have this backwards. Switch them. All right, so we have it right now. That means that the blue with the brown white, brown white is brown. So go ahead and move on to our next pair. 
and we'll repeat the process on all these until we've metered them all to figure out what the polarity. Now this is a General Motors car. What that means is that the door chime goes through the driver's front door. The ding, ding, ding. When we hook this speaker up to it, hit pause. That means that the door chime is coming from the radio into the amplifier, which means that when we amplify it, we're still gonna have the chime going through that door. If we didn't want that, we could just use the rear speakers and we could feed that into something else that would power, let's say, the center channel, a small amplifier. There's, there's lots of ways to get around it. In this case, it'll be okay. It's not gonna be that loud. It started over. Now there again, on this one, there was three that were all going one direction and the fourth wasn't. In this case, it was the driver's front door was backwards from all the others, just like the passenger rear door was backwards from all the others. General Motors is, is being funny. Ha ha, very funny guys. Now, the last thing we wanna test is to see if there is any form of fake engine noise, automatic noise canceling, or anything like that that's coming from the radio that might affect us. Now, to do that, it's gonna be very similar to testing front rear left right with this guy here we're going to also plug in our rta we're really just concerned with the front speakers those are typically the ones that make the noise so for that we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff plugged back into the front and then we will shut all the doors roll up the window and see if we get any silliness coming from this all right so what we're looking at here is the signal all the way up on the two front doors go ahead and turn it down Now go ahead and rev the engine. And what we're looking for is any form of fluctuation in these, any form of number movement, anything at all. On the RTA, what we'd see is we'd actually see a ripple over here that would be the noise cancellation kicking in because usually it affects the low end. And then you'd see it in here because you'd see the voltage change. We don't see any of that on this. The other thing too with cancellation is there's usually microphones located on the ceiling up by the grab bars or in the center of the headliner in the GMs. In this case, we didn't see any. The other thing too is, for the most part, the fake engine noise, the growling sound, GM doesn't do that in most of their cars, but you might not have a GM, so it was helpful to figure out how to test it. Now, a couple other things to take in consideration when doing this is backup sensors, Bluetooth, navigation, OnStar, anything else that is created from the head unit that passes through the radio. That's important to see if those things are coming into the amplifier. This car doesn't have backup sensors, so we don't have to worry about it. What you'd wanna do though, is figure out where the sound is coming in, so for, or where the sound is coming out. So for example, plug everything back in, if, see if the backup sensors make noise out of, let's say the rear speakers or the front speakers. If they make sound out of the front speakers or the rear speakers, it really doesn't matter. Go ahead and take your test speaker and just like we did the polarity test see when it's unplugged if that signal comes out of just like we heard the door chime coming out of the front see if it still does it that way you'll know if it's coming from the radio or the amplifier because if it's not coming from the radio that means it's coming from something else and that could cause you problems because you don't want your customer to lose their backup sensor the same is true with like OnStar or Bluetooth or, or navigation you want to test all those two to make sure that they're working. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going home. <laughs> so at this point, we're pretty good. We have everything that we need as far as what's gonna go where. Now what we have to do is figure out what we're going to do for amplifier and processor. We were kind of worried that, you know, we were gonna have to do summing and stuff like that. And if we were gonna have to do summing, we were gonna use a summing processor. And then if we weren't gonna do summing, we were gonna use a processor that doesn't need to do summing. Then of course there's amplifiers with processors built into them. So there's, there's a lot of scenarios here. We'll go talk to the customer and figure out what we want to do. All right.